Hey guys, my name is Pavan and today I'm going to go over how to master Anna in Overwatch. Now the way you do this is to first master her abilities and then execute her abilities using game sense in real game situations and give your team a chance to win the game. So let's get started. So in this video I'm going to talk about using her biotic rifle, her nano boost, her sleep dart and her bio biotic grenade and then and for each ability i'm going to tell you how to master it and then i'm going to tell you how to use game sense so when you use it in game you're maximizing the effect of that ability and then once you put all that together you become a complete ana player and you can continue climbing the ranks in overwatch now before I get started, I just want to say that I, I think Anna is one of the best heroes to climb with as a healer. Um, I think she has one of the best kits because she can put out a tremendous amount of burst healing and at the same time she has enough in her arsenal that she can do a great job, great job of disrupting the enemy team. So let's get started. Alright, so let's start with the biotic rifle. And one of the things with the biotic rifle that you have to understand is that it's a very powerful weapon because you can kill squishies pretty easily and it can actually do some pretty decent damage on tanks as well. So the first thing you want to do is be able to master the biotic rifle and when it comes to that, it's pretty much just aiming. You have to be able to aim really well. You have to be able to aim well when you're not in scope and also when you're scoped with the weapon. So there's a lot of ways to do this and let's go over some of them. So the first thing you can do before we even start the game is go into Steam and download the Kovacs Aim Trainer, which is a very popular app now. Try to improve your aim within the various workshops that are available within Kovacs Aim Trainer. And you know that's going to help you with the tracking and flick shots. And also that'll help you, and the flick shots will help you when you're aiming down sight with Anoscope. Now, if you don't want to download Kovacs Trainer and you don't want to spend the money, it's com perfectly fine. You can also go into Overwatch and because of the workshop, there are, you know, you know, creators have created aiming courses within Overwatch that you can use to, you know, improve your aim. And all you have to do is go into workshop, enter the code, and you'll be put into a game, into an aim trainer that you can use with whatever hero you want. Now, also, guys, I think it's really important to be able to aim at Pharah and Mercy uh, in game while they're in the sky. So I think this workshop is also a great way to practice that. And, you know, I will put the work, uh, code for this workshop uh, in the description down below. Uh, just remember, once you spa, you have to um, emote uh, at the bottom to make the soldiers jump. And if you emote the bottom again, uh, they will fly. All right, guys, so now let's talk about the game sense aspect of Anna's biotic rifle. I think one of the main things when it comes to game sense about Anna's biotic rifle is your positioning. And I think in short, the best positioning when it comes to playing Anna is being in the line of sight of your teammates and also the enemy team. Now, obviously, there are some exceptions to this if the enemy team has an Ash or a Widowmaker or a Hanzo, because then you can, you know, obviously get shot from the back line. But like if, if those snipers are non-existent on the other team, then being in the line of sight of both the enemy team and your own team is really good. Because there's a lot less distance between your team's characters and the enemy team's characters. So you have to move your mouse a lot less, which means it's a lot easier to heal and damage and be a destructor at the same time. Now, the Biotic Rifle is so good because you're able to build ult with it really easy. So when it comes to game sense also, let's quickly talk about target priority with Ana. A clear target priority should be first your, your tanks because uh, you, you have great burst healing so you should be able to heal them pretty easily. And then your squishies, make sure they're fully healed. And if your whole team is fully healed, you should never just be standing around doing nothing. Um, Ana's Biotic Rifle is so powerful that you should just be spamming hip fire shots into the opposing enemy tanks if you can because that's going to build up charge, build up ult charge really quickly and at the same time you'll be able to you know, be a disruptor. Also you should obviously be chucking in uh, Ana grenades and sleep darts when it's, when, when it's safe to um, and we'll talk about sleep dart and uh, uh, biotic grenade later but you should never be just be doing nothing you know always spam your biotic rifle into the enemy team you never know what shot will hit and it's free ult charge and you're being a disruptor. Now let's talk about Ana's sleep dart. Um, Anna's sleep dart is probably one of the most powerful abilities in the game because one sleep dart at the right time 
um, on the right on the right enemy team's character can pretty much change the whole game. For example, if you hit a, a sleep dart on a bastion on the other team, that that pretty much wins your team the fight. At, at the same time, a sleep dart's really good because you know you're able to defend yourself if you if you're being flanked by a Genji or a tracer uh, let's say you know a fight is about to start between you know both of the teams and you're able to hit a sleep dart on the enemy reinhardt before the fight even begins again that can you know also help your team pretty much um you know take the fight so the sleep dart's very powerful i think one of the most important things again when it comes to sleep darts again you have to master the ability first so when it comes to mastering the ability you have to again just practice it uh, practice aiming with it and thankfully there's a really good workshop where you can practice aiming with it the one that i'm showing you here is workshop by by darwin streams and now in, initially this when this workshop was released you had to make sure that you had an uh, an actual player on the other team um so a doom fist would spot but i found a workaround where what you can actually do is you can just set the ai to lucio and set it to hard mode and you know you can have as many as you want um, the great thing about Lucio is that, you know, again, he can have the speed boost on, so you're going to have to practice sleep darts on a fast character. At the same time, he jumps a lot, uh, the AI does. And also, um, when you start getting a bunch of Lucio's, uh, Lucio AIs into this game mode, they start booping you around, you know, with this uh, ability. And that really works well because, you know, now all of a sudden you're being booped into the air and you have to practice aiming down. You know with the sleep dart so that it really mimics a very good in-game situation where you know there's just a lot of chaos and you have to hit a sleep dart so this workshop i think is a really really good way to practice hitting sleep darts and also one of the other things i didn't tell you guys about even with the biotic rifle and practicing it is you know you can just go into a game mode creative that is always active and it's called you know just simply aim arena where you know you're, where you're thrown into a game and you know you're, you're just actually going up against real players you're able to practice whatever you want and there's lots of genjis in there there's lots of doom fists in there that you can practice your sleep dart in you can also practice using your biotic rifle so there's a lot of ways to improve your aim with the sleep dart and biotic rifle rifle and once you're able to master that you're really going to start making a lot a big impact with anna uh, and when it comes to sleep dart now let's talk about the game's aspect of it one of the biggest problems i see that you know lower rank players make with anna sleep dart and you know these are players that have mastered um anna sleep dart in terms of aiming the, a big problem they make is they'll sleep a character on the other team and you know they're gonna start trying to one v one that character. You know they're gonna sleep. You know typically what you see is uh, they will hit the sleep, and then they will anti grenade into you know um, a primary fire with the biotic rifle. Now this is great if it's a squishy character, but I see characters starting to do this with a tank or you know a character like a brig for example that isn't exactly squishy because she can still one v one you. Um, I think in this situation this is where comms come in, and you know what I've what I do a lot of times is. I, when I sleep an enemy character on the other team and I know I can't realistically 1v1 him or her, I just, I turn, I, I push the talk and I just go crazy. I'm like, yo, I got this guy sleep. I got this guy sleep. Turn around, turn around and on me, on me. Um, and when you communicate that, your enemy, your care teammates know and they can come and help you. Um, there was this one time, I don't have the footage for it because I wasn't recording, but you know, I slept a, a I slept a Sigma who was flanking for some reason um at, at our back line and you know i told reinhardt hey reinhardt turn around pin him pin him pin him and you know he was able to pin that sleeping uh sigma against the wall simply because of my communication if i tried to one me one that sigma i was probably going to lose that fight and you know we were gonna uh lose the overall fight so uh, one of the big things about the sleep dart is being able to not just hit it but once you hit it it's being able to communicate to your team that hey i have this character sleep let's kill him and one shot him because i see this a lot where you know players try to one me one him and you just missed a perfectly good chance to win the fight you know you you hit you did the hardest part which is hit the sleep but the easiest part is just calling it out to your teammates like hey i hit the sleep let's finish this off all right, now let's talk about the biotic grenade, which is probably one of the most powerful abilities in the game. 
and something that you never really want to leave on cooldown because leaving it on cooldown can really cost you ult charge throughout the game. I think it's best to hang on to it if you feel like you know there's a flanker on the other team like a tracer or genji that is constantly harassing you but in other situations where like i constantly lob that grenade in against walls so it hits the enemy and you know it gives me a lot of ult charge and you know anting a team really just stops their forward momentum because you know they're not going to move forward until they're able to be fully healed and that can be really powerful in any fight when it comes to mastering the biotic grenade there's really not much to it once you understand the trajectory that the grenade takes and the timing of it, um, it's pretty easy to master it. And one of the most important things to understand is that you can actually, just because Reinhardt might have a shield up doesn't mean you still can't hit the other enemy team. If you aim, if there's a wall behind the Reinhardt and the enemy team, you can aim for the wall and the grenade will splash off the wall and still anti the whole enemy team. Um, now obviously you still want to keep the grenade handy just in case your team gets in trouble and needs to you know and you need to heal them and you know one of the things i really love to do is before the game even starts um lob grenades into the enemy spa so it's just, just as they're coming out you're getting full ult charge because a lot of times they don't expect it if you do it from certain angles also when it comes to the game sense aspect for the biotic grenade I think the best way to use it is honestly like if you sleep someone the combo that i always use is once i sleep dart them um i primary fire once and right after primary firing i throw the anna grenade and i get that one more primary fire in right afterwards because that's when the target's gonna be most stationary and uh once you do that that pretty much one hits anyone um any squishy in the game now let's talk about the nano boost anna's ultimate to me, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm any character and, and an Anna nano boosts me, the nano boost just makes you feel way more confident than it should just because of the sheer power that it can kind of give you in terms of damage resistance and damage output. Everything that I've told you guys up till now, it's to help you build this ult as much as you can because as we know in Overwatch, the most important thing is ult economy. If you are able to output a lot of ult and help your team in fights, it's, it's going to put you in a way better position to win than the opposing team's healing. And that's why I think it's important to constantly chuck grenades in to the enemy team. And that's why I also think it's important to constantly spam your biotic grenade rifle and hip fire that thing into the other team's tanks because that builds your ult. And that's the most important thing. If you can output more ults than the other enemy team's healers, you're probably gonna put your team in a way better position to win the game and you're gonna climb up the ranks. So as I told you before, Anna's ult is very powerful to use. So you need to have a very good idea of what your target priority is in terms of outputting that nano boost out. And you also need to understand what the perfect situation is to use it. So obviously you can use it defensively or you can use it offensively. I've found that the best defensive way to use this thing is to use it when maybe one of your tanks is just being damaged so hard that you can't possibly out heal the damage that is incoming and you need to quickly heal him, him or her up to full health so your front line doesn't completely break and the enemy team doesn't just run over you guys. So in that situation, the nano boost is great because you can use that to instantly bring your tank up to full health. And at the same time, you keep the integrity of the team together and you still give yourself a chance in the fight. And then the other way to use it is obviously offensively, which is way more common. And when it comes to using it offensively, I think it's important to understand who to use it on and who not to use it on. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is I think that depends on two things. It depends on the rank that you're playing in. And I think it depends on, you know, who, which characters are on your team. First of all, like, I don't care what rank you're playing at. I don't think you use the ult on a Junkrat. I don't think that you use the ult on a Mei or any healer. I don't think a healer is ever a good option unless you just are in the mood to meme people. But also, if you're at a lower rank, I don't think you use the nano ult on DPS just because... The DPS players at bronze, silver, and I don't know if they're as skilled to get the most value out of nano boost. And that's no slight against them, but this is just something that you need to think about. Obviously, if you feel like your DPS at in, in silver or gold are doing great, then sure, use it. But you need to make sure that if you're going to use the ult on a DPS, you need to make sure that you actually believe in their skill set and their abilities 
so you can get the most out of the nano. In, I mean, in lower ranks, I feel like using it on tanks is just way more effective because it's a lot easier for Reinhardt to just swing his hammer around than it is for a nano boosted Genji to, to intricately dance around with a blade and try to kill people at lower ranks especially. So that's that's what it, that's that's the most important thing when it comes to using the nano boost. Just be smart about when you use it because it is very important as with any ult, and you need to make sure you hit it because that could be the difference between a win or a loss in, in any fight. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. This was a guide that I did on how to master Anna. That's what it comes down to with Anna, guys. It comes down to mastering the abilities, mastering the biotic rifle, mastering that it's the sleep dart. And, and you do that with aim, aim training courses like Kovacs and by going into workshops with an Overwatch. And you master your aim. And once you master your aim, you're able to combine that with game sense. And you're able to get the most out of your abilities and the most value out of your abilities in game to give your team an edge. And once you start doing that and you combine that with communication, you're able to climb through the ranks very fast and very effectively. And you, you can become a very good Ana player. So thanks for watching guys. Remember to subscribe, leave a like. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let me know if, you, if I missed something. I'm, I'm out of country right now, so I'm not able to stream on Twitch, but I do regularly stream on Twitch. I will resume streaming on Twitch again around December 28th, and I will stream into the new year, obviously. So check me out on that. I'm usually playing Overwatch, and um, it's, it's, it's a meme of a time, so you might want to check that out. And on this channel, I'm going to constantly upload quality content about gaming, about various games that, you know, will help you become better and rise up the ranks. So thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day. I'll see you next time.